This video introduces the double arrow proof rules. There's double arrow out and double arrow in, and they're two of the easiest proof rules that we see all semester, as long as you remember that the double arrow is equivalent to the combination of two single arrows with the ampersand. In fact, these two rules really are ampersand out and ampersand in, if you think about this equivalence. Notice I've lined them up where the therefore bars are in the same positions here, because as always, our proof rules say if you have what's above the therefore bar, then you get to write what's down below it. Have what's above, you write what's below. All right, double arrow out's an automatic rule, just like ampersand out. If you see a double arrow, well, you break it up into two single arrows, thinking about this equivalence. Of course, if you want to build a double arrow, you have to have the two single arrows on two separate lines. As always, the best way to learn the rules is to use them in proofs. So here's an argument. Let's do this. Um, let's construct a proof together. Looking at line one, we notice that the double arrow is the main connective. Well, in fact, that's great news. It's just as good as seeing an ampersand because we know that we can immediately create two new lines. Since we know the main connective, we know that everything in front of it is P and everything after it is Q. Well, P double arrow Q breaks into two single arrows, and that's what we're going to do. In fact, the easiest way to think about this is that the first step is to rewrite that very line, but we want to replace the main double arrow with a single arrow. Don't change anything else. Just rewrite the line, replace the double arrow with a single arrow. And then the next step is to flip it with respect to that arrow. So for the second step, we're going to write Z double arrow W arrow H double arrow tilde R. The justification for both of those, of course, is going to be one double arrow out. In fact, just like with ampersand out, I will use ditto marks here to show that I'm doing the same thing twice. And now I can check off line one. Double arrows are great news. They break into two single arrows. Of course, I should mention, when we do ampersand out, we always break an ampersand into both parts, but we're not really obligated to do that. And in the same way, you're not obligated to write four and five here. If there was only one or the other that you really wanted, you could just take the one that you wanted and ignore the other one. All right, we worked on line one. We're working our way down. Line two and three both have arrows as their main connectives, but obviously we don't have a Z or a W to do arrow out, so two and three can't work on them right now. Line four and five have single arrows because they came from one. Well. Let's look at line 5 first, because this is the one that's more interesting for our purposes. When we look at this line, we think to ourselves, if I had Z double arrow W on another line by itself, then I could write H double arrow tilde R. Do we have Z double arrow W on another line by itself? Well, we don't, but I hope you're seeing that lines 2 and 3 are the two halves of this. And so line 5 is going to inspire us to write a new line, namely Z double arrow W. Now I'm not taking line 6 from 5. What I'm doing is I'm being inspired to take 2 and 3 and put them together using double arrow in. And so what will the justification be for line 6? Well, of course, it'll be 2, 3, double arrow in. Notice lines 2 and 3 have a sort of X relationship between their antecedents and consequence. That's exactly the relationship that you need in order to be able to do double arrow in. All right, this is a creative rule. You should never do a creative rule unless you know exactly why you're doing it. But we know exactly why we did this. We built line 6 so that we could do the arrow out on line 5. And of course, that's going to give us H double arrow 
tilde r. And that would be 5, 6, arrow out. We've now worked on 5, and we could check that off. Notice what has just happened. If you look at line 4, you might think to yourself, oh, look, if I have h double arrow tilde r, then I could write z double arrow w. Should I do arrow out with 4 and 7? Well, there wouldn't be anything wrong with it, but notice if, if you do, you're just going to end up with another line with z double arrow w. This is a very common thing. When you break up a double arrow like line 1, you're oftentimes going to get two lines, and one of them just won't be very useful. So we could check off 4 and said, well, in a way, we've kind of worked on it, because if we did, if we did the actual arrow out, what we would get is something that we already have. In fact, we're virtually done with this proof. Notice what h double arrow tilde r is. It's the same thing as tilde r double arrow h, it's just in reverse order. Well, we know that if you see a ampersand b, let's say you were doing a proof and you got to a ampersand b on, say, line 10 in your proof, and your conclusion was to get to b and a. What do you have to do? Well, we know it's a little silly, but you have to break up the a and b to get a and b, and then you have to put them back together. Well, basically the same thing is going on in this situation. However, when we break up line 7, it's a double arrow, so what does it break up into? It breaks up into two single arrows. So we're going to write h arrow tilde r first, rewrite the line, replace the double arrow with a single arrow, and then on line 9, we're going to write tilde r arrow h. And that would be 7 double arrow out, done twice. All right, but now that we have 8 and 9, well, now we can use the double arrow in rule, and we'll put these together and just say 8 comma 9, double arrow in, and success, we're done. I hope you've got the impression that double arrow in and double arrow out are really very simple rules, because in fact they are.